Nichananda Prabhu is considered to be the foundation of the Guru Tattva. We first understand our Guru means representative of Krishna. Then when we are a little more advanced, we can understand that the Guru is the representative of Baladev or Nichananda. Nichananda Prabhu is actually Baladev. So that is considered the foundation of the Guru Tattva principle. So the worship of the, the, the birth, observance of the worship of the Guru on his birthday, this is started by Chaitanya Mahaprabhu himself, as opposed to doing that worship puja on uh, uh, the Guru Purnima, you see, which is more like Vedic traditional way. Mahaprabhu showed a, something a little more specific he had in mind. So it's interesting to note, Srila Bhakti Siddhanta had his, initiated his first disciple in 1906. He was born in 1874, so help me for a minute and count the years. 84, 94, 04, and 2. He was 32 years old. His guru, Bhakti Vinod and Gorakashore, they were both living at the time. But uh, uh, not a lot, of, a lot is known about that, but he... he uh, initiated his first disciple or first devotee into Harinam in 1906. Then in 1918 he became a sannyasi. Mm -hmm. yeah, uh, during the Gaur Purnima festival he became a sannyasi in 18, uh, 1918. But now we have just heard that the first Vyasa Puja was performed in 1924 when he on his 50th birthday. So since the time he was 32 years old, he had a disciple or more disciples, so there were many, many disciples. But the first Vyasa Puja was not officially recognized and celebrated until 1924 when he was 50, 50 years old. So one thing we learn from this is that Krishna consciousness is not just a set of rules and festivals and rituals that we must do. Krishna consciousness is the evolution of consciousness uh, upwards, which is in a sense backwards, meaning going back to your original state of consciousness, huh? coming out of material consciousness, withdrawing from material consciousness and drawing inward towards Krishna. So <clears throat> it is not just, as I said, a set of rules, a set of functions. Oh, uh, we have a guru, so therefore we celebrate. It must be a real thing. Hmm? The real celebration of Guru Puja, as we may hear in this talk, or we certainly hear in other talks and articles, is a daily function, actually. The real and supermost uh, uh, worship of the Guru is to live by his order, to receive the instruction of the Guru and follow that. That is the highest standard of worship, and that we should be doing on a daily basis, not just once in a year. Mm -hmm. uh, mm, although this festival is supposed to be with some feeling, it must have some heart affection within, more or less, it is a, a ritual type of festival mm -hmm. with flowers and, and procedures and, and, and there is a lot of show in it. Uh, it will look very good here on the camera. It looks very good, very colorful. But on the day to day, the show is gone. There's not a lot of show on the day to day. But here is where the quality of the gold, the quality of the metal is put to test. Here is where it enters the fire. The test is made in the fire. That is day to day. The real worship of Guru is how much we are surrendered to following his instruction. And then the, what is it called, the antithesis of that is just the opposite. The rejection of the order of the Guru, refusing to follow his instruction, that is the worst uh, type of step or consciousness that a disciple can manifest. You follow. The best thing is to follow his order. The worst thing is to reject his order. Uh, we read Srila Pori Maharaj was saying the other day that even if the order of the Guru is painful for you to follow, you should never argue against it. You should never criticize anything that he has said. And you should not reject his order. Even if it's painful to remain silent uh, and follow his order, you may find it painful Still, you should bear that pain. Somehow or another, under the 
the, the order of the Supreme Lord that pain is meant for you, it is good for you, somehow or another. It may even be unexplainable, but it should be accepted. The worst thing we can do is to reject the order of our Guru. We reject our order of our Guru, and then we will say, well, he is not our Guru, he's not Guru. And then the question comes, and why are you accepted in the first place? <coughs> Were you a fool? Hmm. And all those other people, they're also fools? <coughs> We should first consider, will we follow the Guru according to his order? Then only we should come forward to take initiation. It is not, it is not like in marriage. There is marriage. And then after some time, if some people aren't uh, happy together, they may file for a divorce in the court. Uh, but under the laws of God, under religion, there is no divorce. So you have time to think about it. If you want to get married, there's an engagement period and so forth. Once you marry, that's all. There is no turning back from that point. Now, in the modern world, there is some arrangement, but that is nothing arrangement. Huh? In the religious world, there is no such arrangement for that. We make, life is about making decisions and sticking with them. So we should consider, before we take initiation, are we serious to follow the order of the Guru? And if we are, then we may happily accept initiation. And then we should live by that order, whatever order and service we have been given. There was Vyasadeva, he compiled and divided the Vedic literature into its different departments as we have it today. In Chaitanya Charitamrita it is mentioned that Vrindavan Das Thakur, who wrote Chaitanya Bhagavat, he is the Vyasadeva of Chaitanya Leela. Uh, so from here, this is what is called spiritual thinking. A progressive way of thought is established mm -hmm. that the representative of the Leelas of the Lord, originally Vyas, and later Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, mm -hmm. who represents their knowledge, who represents their Leelas pastimes, that is called Vyas, mm -hmm. who will disseminate that. Vyas divided and disseminated that knowledge. So who will disseminate that? That is Vyas. In Chaitanya Leela, this was first done by Vrindavan Das Thakur. So then it is established, what is the work of the Guru? Mm -hmm. Someone will, there are many qualifications of a Brahmin, of a Sadhu, of a Sannyasi, many qualifications are there. Qualifications of the Guru are also there. Mm -hmm. Many people overlook this uh, in the modern world. The qualification is the dress, his beard, his hair, how big his ashram is. Da. Gurudev. Hmm? Mm -hmm. These are not any of the qualifications that are mentioned in the Shastras. That he must have a big ashram. Maybe he has no ashram. Huh? That he has uh, a gray beard or a black beard or no beard at all. Or short hair or long hair or shaved head at all. It, these, the, none of these are the qualifications. Hmm? These are not even the characteristics. Hmm? <laughs> About his nature, there are many things are said. But it comes down to the bottom but we, we say in English now the bottom line, the foundational principle of the guru is he must disseminate the knowledge of Krishna consciousness. He must bear that to others. He must distribute that to others. Do you follow this point? Mm -hmm. So who does that work, he is also considered to be then, not Vyasadeva himself. Mm -hmm. He may be considered to be the Vyas of that preaching campaign, but generally we don't call like that, but we call as the representative of Vyas. And thus, this, this day as we celebrate here in Vyasa Puja, as we celebrated last week, Srila Prabhupada's Vyasa Puja, as we celebrate in Kartik, Srila Purimars' Vyasa Puja, Srila Sridharmars' Vyasa Puja, <coughs> many Vyasa Pujas are there. Mm -hmm. Not one, not two, not a dozen. <coughs> Currently in the world, we're happy to say there are hundreds of Vyasa Pujas uh, being cele celebrated in the world, devotees gathering, celebrating the uh, birthday, appearance day of their guru, who is doing what? Who is distributing Krishna consciousness? Mm -hmm. Who is distributing the Vedic knowledge? Who is distributing the knowledge of Chaitanya Leela? Mm -hmm. They are celebrating that. So we're talking about universal principles, not um, monopolies. Only it will be kept by one or two or a few. Universal principles, whoever will rise to that, to that occasion, uh, he may qualify 
uh, to be taken as the representative representative of the us. It is not anyone's claim by anything other than uh, performing that activity. Not by birth. One cannot claim to be the representative of Vyas by birth, but only by doing the work of Vyasadeva. Then one may be, uh, one, may, well, one may be taken in, the, in that way. So in general, Vyas is the, is the Mula Guru, principal Guru. That's in general. There, is, there are different arrangements. Let me see, just to have an example. In various countries, you have armies, divisions of the armies. You have a commander of those armies, and so forth. And in general, you look, and some, they call him general. He's in charge of the army. But, but during a state of war, in the last of the last, the prime minister of the country, or the president of the country, he is known as the supreme commander-in-chief. He is actually in char charge of the armies. Now, in the general functioning world, that general, he is in charge. But in the ultimate issue, he is not the highest authority. That prime minister or president, he is the higher authority. So in general, the Mula Guru, the original Guru, is Vyasadeva. But when we enter into rasa, what is called rasa, uh, particular mellows of devotion, then that just becomes a general conception. And the Mula Guru of our Sampradaya is Sri Rupa Goswami. Therefore, we are called Rupanugas, not Vyasanugas. We're not called the followers of Vyas. Sometimes it is said we're spreading Vedic culture, but actually we're not spreading Vedic culture. Huh? Vedic culture does not allow so many uh, things uh, by, by women. They cannot perform so many of the duties. In Vedic culture, the ladies cannot cook in the temple. There's so many restrictions in Vedic culture. Only the born Brahmins can have Ubanayana. All types of things. Uh, restrictions, restrictions, and restrictions. Uh, we do not follow all those restrictions. We are actually not Vedic. We follow more of the, more of the Pancharatric, Narada Pancharatra. Uh, it's called Narada Pancharatra. Uh, uh, the worship of Radha and Krishna is hard to find in the Vedas. But there is much of it mentioned in the Pancharatra. We follow the, we follow the uh, Panchasamskara. Mm, for initiations, <coughs> purifications. So actually, we're done. We're when one in general vyas, but when we when we go deeper into the departments of Krishna consciousness, there we find that the head of all the departments in rasa is Srila Rupa Goswami. He is the Mula Guru, means he is the root, and we are considered <coughs> the followers of, of Sri Rupa. So although it is Vyasa Puja Day, it would not be complete day without mentioning. Rupa Goswami on this day. So, there is an example given by Jiva Goswami about the holy name. He compares it to a circle. A circle. And this circle has a higher point and it has a lower point. Well, the holy name moves all around the circle from the lowest point up to the highest point. So, when we first contact the holy name of Krishna, where do you suspect we are on the circle? The higher point or the lower point? Yeah. No, we're on the lower point. So the holy name can go down even to those who have no qualification, even to the lowest point, those who are not devotees. They may also take the name of Krishna. Those who are filled with sinful activities, those who are addicted to intoxication and so many things, they are found to take the name of Krishna. The name of Krishna is so merciful. It goes to the lowest point and even below to the lowest of the low. In low, there is even low below that. Lowest of the low. The holy name will go to the lowest of the low. And the holy name will carry us to the highest of the high also. To the top of the circle and beyond. Highest of the high. But we have to remember that along the way, qualification is required. Krishna consciousness is about self-improvement. It is about qualification. Not just assuming, I have it, I got it, I did it, I'm doing it, it's over. It's not like that. It's like in school. You finish one day's lesson, but there's another day, and that's tomorrow, and there'll be another lesson tomorrow. 
I was asking Giri Maharaj about the boys and their mantra. They're, they're completed home, and he said, no, 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 they're just beginning. They already learned so many mantras for doing the homans, but he told me, no, no, they're just beginning. There are so many mantras, yet they have to learn. So we should not be like a foolish student who stays in school for a couple of weeks and then thinks he finished the course or knows all the knowledge that there is to be known. As he closes one book, he must have the intelligence to know shortly he'll be opening another one. The end of one book for an intelligent person is the beginning of another. So there's always one more step, one more step. We should be conscious in our Krishna consciousness like that. We should not be satisfied that, oh, I have this. We should be aware, no, I have to progress. I have to progress. So it is said that Mahaprabhu, the distinguishing character, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, is that he comes to give what has never ever been given before, which you cannot even find within the Vedas, unless you are a very, very keen reader, very difficult to find. That is called Ujwala Ras. Hmm? That is the most intimate mellows of confidential service to the Supreme Lord, Sri Krishna. The most intimate mellows of love and affection. He came to give that. Then why you don't have that? He came to give that, and we have all come to Krishna consciousness, why don't we have that? Because we are not qualified to receive that gift yet. First is the gift of the holy name, and through the holy name, then we become qualified to receive this great gift of divine love that Mahaprabhu uh, has come to give, anxiously has come to give to every individual in the world, providing they may, they may qualify. To receive the holy name, he barred, uh, not barred, but he removed all qualification. No qualification necessary. Those of you who have been on Sankirtan in Western countries, you have seen the holy name goes right into sometimes nightclubs, bars, and dancing shows. Sometimes the devotees just go right into these clubs, chanting in, in Sankirtan. And those people who are intoxicated, they sometimes stand up on the table, and they start to sing and chant Hare Krishna, fall over on the floor, and this goes down the street. Now listen, there are about three people sleeping. If you're going to sleep, get up and go. I don't want to see another person fall asleep. Understand? If your eyes are shutting, stand up. Don't sleep. It's discouraging to see sleeping faces when you're the talker. Understand? So the holy name goes to anybody and everybody. It goes to even those people who are the most unqualified. But to actually get this Krishna Prema, and the mood of prema, this very intimate mood of serving Krishna and divine love, well, that requires some qualification. We cannot just give that to drunkards and unqualified people. And even neophyte devotees, they're not qualified for that. And there must be progress. Then we, 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 first we are invited, come here, sit down. Later we are told, stand up and receive this gift. Hmm? But that standing up, well, that takes something. Huh? How to stand up and receive the gift that's never been given in the world before. Huh? Since, since the day of Brahma began, since the earth has been created, Mahabrabhu came to give a gift that's never ever been given before. It's a, it's a mellow of love. It's a mellow sweetness of love and devotion, never given before. How to receive that? Huh? So we have to qualify by the, through the chanting of the holy name of Krishna. Therefore, that must be taken very, very seriously. <coughs> Where do we get this qualification? We get this by following the order of Guru. If we don't follow the order of our Guru, we can go on chanting for millions of lifetimes. We will never get the qualification to receive <coughs> this gift of Mahaprabhu. So, as I said earlier, the... <coughs> Um, what is the duty of the guru is to discriminate, uh, distribute the, disseminate, distribute the knowledge of Vyas. What is, what Vyas is given in so many departments of knowledge for the perfection of human life. Then also it was mentioned that what is Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's mission, because Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is Krishna himself in this yuga, yuga avatar, so what is his mission? The guru must naturally distribute that. But Mahaprabhu himself he appointed one person above all to be at the head of that distribution. Again, what he came to give. Hmm? The, what he came to give is this rasa, 
Ujwala rasa, particular type of rasa, hmm? mellow of conjugal rasa. Hmm? The method to receive it is the holy name. So sometimes we hear, we say, that Mahaprabhu's gift is the holy name. That is, that is true when, it, when, when the assumption is also there. Yes, and through the process of the holy name, then one will, will, will receive this mellow of rasa. But if we think that, no, just, just the holy name, without anything, nothing attached to it, this is all he came to give, this falls short of the understanding of the, of the gift of Mahaprabhu. Because the holy name of Krishna has been given in many yugas, been given in so many yugas. Vishnu right? Sahasranam has been there for thousands of years before Mahaprabhu came. The name of Govinda, Madhava, so many names are there. So just this, uh, the Sankirtan, the prime benediction for humanity at large. Huh? The benediction is within the gift of the holy name. Do hmm? you follow? Yes. So specifically, Mahaprabhu himself appointed Rupa Goswami <coughs> as the head. And it is mentioned here in Srila Purimarja's words that generally Rupa has been uh, fondly appreciated by so many successor acharyas due to his closeness to Mahaprabhu. He was so close. Well, what does this closeness mean? How close he was? Hmm? He lived in the next room, maybe. Or he just, maybe he just lived on the same street. He lived so close to Mahaprabhu. Hmm? Many people feel they knew our guru, Prabhupada. Hmm? Uh, people from the world. Oh yes, yes, Swami used to buy biscuits or something from my shop. So they think they know him because he used to shop. Hmm? Others say, no, no, he used to collect some pens and paper from me. I know him, I know him, you see. And then, of course, there are his god brothers and others, and certainly they must know him. But many people say, yes, yes, I know Swamiji, I know Swamiji. Because when a person becomes famous, becomes great, everybody likes to then emphasize their connection to such a person, because then they are in fortunate <coughs> position also. But we say, those who know him best, are those who, those who serve him most dearly. They will know him best. So this Rupa Goswami was very dear to Mahaprabhu internally because of his service. And he became so close to Mahaprabhu because of his service, but his service was at a distance. He didn't live in the same building. He wasn't Mahaprabhu's personal assistant. He didn't bring his food. He didn't wash his clothes. He didn't do these things for him. He didn't travel with him to South India. He served Mahaprabhu at a distance, at a distance, and the, and, and, and 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 in English we call that was called it is called the vicarious experience, mm -hmm. the vicarious experience. Um, it, it is like this. Sometimes we have heard that a man, a young man, dies in a war somewhere or in an accident somewhere, and the mother who's thousands of miles away. They, they, they immediately know, oh, my son has died. They know. No telegram, no word. They know. Somehow they know. It's, it's rather mysterious. The thing has happened to someone else. But because of love's attachment, another person, he knows that. There is some attachment there. And therefore they know. Mm -hmm. They know. Well, in Krishna Leela, many things are like that. Uh -huh. Something that is happening to Krishna or to Krishna's devotees, and the result of that shows up somewhere else. For example, this is a little bit different, but when Haridas Thakur was beaten with a stick, sometimes we wonder, oh, how Mahaprabhu allowed him to be beaten, he, he'll be beaten in so much pain, and, but he's pure devotee of Krishna, why he has to suffer? Well, if we look and in, in, in read about that according to the authorized uh, biographers, Actually, Haridas Thakur never felt anything. And later, he saw all the, all the whipping marks. They never came on his own back. He saw they all came on the back of Mahaprabhu. And this, of course, this was very, this was very painful. That was even probably more painful for Haridas. Mm -hmm. Probably he would have preferred it himself. Of course, no one can harm the Supreme Lord. So then that comes. Oh, actually... My Lord protected me, covered me with his own body. No one could see, but he covered me. They were beating him. We understand, you give good beating to devotee. Huh? That beating goes to Krishna. Huh? Good beating you give a devotee, that goes to Krishna. Huh? 
That's a, a particular thing we should be careful, careful about. Abuse, use, abuse of devotees. What are the devotees? If we give a beating to a devotee, it may go to Mahaprabhu, it may go to Krishna. So, but means something is done here, reaction to that comes somewhere else. Now I'm avoiding giving so many examples because there are many people here who are not qualified to understand those examples. But there are many examples in Krishna Leela when something happens between Krishna and his devotees and another devotee at a great distance, he shows the symptoms of that love exchange. He's two kilometers away, some distance away. But the symptom of that love exchange, huh? there's some intensity and there's some ecstasy in the Leela of Radha and Krishna. Hmm? And that devotee at a far distance, he also starts shaking. Right? That's called vicarious. He is connected there to what is going on with the divine couple, with the devotees of Krishna. He is connected through service, through love and affection. It's very powerful. It is not like a wire. A wire is nothing in comparison to affection. Affection and attachment can connect even beyond the universe. And actually it does. Because as we'll hear, Krishna is beyond the universe. His leelas are beyond the universe. His devotees go and reside eternally beyond the universe. What will connect us to them? Some people think just being in the institution. Just be in the institution, you're connected. They compare the institution to a boat. Just stay in the boat. We call them the boat people. But not just by being in any institution. Hmm? Otherwise, why any, some people will fall to Gaudiya Mutt. Huh? The institution is established by Srila Bhakti Siddhanta. Hmm? We should not fault any institution because the institution is it, it, it's just an arrangement in this world. It's the people in the institution, they make it what it is or what it isn't. You see? And it may have been great, it may even be great at present. But if great is not there, if devotees are not there, then Krishna is not there. It doesn't matter who made the institution 500 years ago or 100 years ago or 10 years ago or yesterday. If no Krishna consciousness is there, then there's nothing. It's just a name. Krishna is not simply waiting in that institution for something to happen. He is wherever it is happening. That's where he is. And also he's not limited. It will only be in one place at once. He may be in many places simultaneously. So, Rupa Goswami was so close to Mahaprabhu through his service and through following the order of Mahaprabhu. There is no service without the order of Guru. Service is there, but it's going on by there's no order. What type of service it is? There's no service. Through the order of Guru, service is established. By performing this service, we are drawn close to the feet of Krishna. In the case, Rupa Goswami is drawn so close to Mahaprabhu, that he just entered the heart of Mahaprabhu. He can know everything what is in the heart of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. That, when it says he was close, that is what it means. He was so close, he understood the mind and heart of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And this was revealed in their Leela, in their pastimes during Radha Yatra. Mahaprabhu was singing in front of Jagannath. No one can understand what he says. Even those who hear what he says can't understand <coughs> what it means. He's singing some verses by Bharat Muni and, and uh, what's it called, Bharat Natyam Shastra, uh, Shastra or something. It's very confusing. Devotees couldn't understand. But Rupa Goswami and also at that time Srup Damodar, these two alone, they understood what is there in these words of Mahaprabhu. And, and Rupa Goswami, he, he, he put that to another verse. He wrote that in some poetry. And when Mahaprabhu saw this, he realized, oh, of course, Mahaprabhu knows he's omniscient, but in the Leela, then, oh, you have got my mind, you have got my heart. Huh? You know what is my heart, and you have, you, have, you have given this out. He slapped his face. Just gave a slap. But actually, he was very happy. So close to me you have come, that you know my heart. So that's what it means to be close to Mahaprabhu. It doesn't mean to live on the same street, to share the same apartment. I also used to live in the next room next to Prabhupada. I thought, well, I'm very lucky. And some new bhaktas would come around at the time. And I was in the next room in Juhu. You went up the top of the stairs. There was a room on the right that was Prabhupada's. A room on the left that was the sannyasi room. So that was a very prestigious, prestigious room. But I tell you, many people went through that room. Went through and kept going. 
They didn't come so close to Prabhupada because they did not serve. We have to serve our Guru. Then by serving our Guru, then we become close to our Guru. Then we can understand what is in his heart, what are his intentions. Without service, we can never <coughs> know. We can never know. Service is the key. And Rupa Goswami's service to Mahaprabhu was the key to his heart. And seeing all this, this arrangement, how this came out in Mahaprabhu, he appointed him. He will be the head of the Sampradaya. So currently it means also Guru must represent Rupa Raghunath. We call it the line of Rupa Raghunath. Why Raghunath? Because he's the student. There's a thing between the student and the, uh, sorry, the teacher and the student. There is a transmission, this ideal transmission. The teacher wants to give something. What he gives, we must see it in the student. What, is, what, is, what became visible in Raghunath Das Goswami is at the top of the wave of devotion found anywhere in the universe. His subtlety moods of devotion <coughs> are showing us the highest, perfectionable attain, uh, highest perfection attainable by any living entity in time, space, or otherwise. The highest plane shown in that disciple, Raghunath. Rupa Raghunath. So, Srila Bhakti Siddhanta, he is advised one should catch the foot dust of the, dis of, the, of the followers of this Rupa Raghunath. What is this transmission going on between these two, which is originally born from the relationship of Ra uh, uh, Rupa Goswami and Mahaprabhu coming down and given uh, to Raghunath Das? What is this line? What is this mood? This transmission? Those who are the followers of that, those who are the wor worshippers of that, the followers of that, we should seek the dust of their feet. Not just on our head, we should try to become that dust on their feet. And he said this repeatedly again and again and again. The dust of the feet of the followers of Rupa Raghunath. That is our only goal in life. But we shouldn't, you should not think that that means, oh, I'll go and sweep Guru Maharaj's room, a lot of dust comes out of there every day. I got it. I got it. And then we'll go off in our Jeep and drive off and have a soda somewhere and enjoy. I think, I've got it in a kavacha. Of course, I have some of that in a kavacha. Many of us have some of that type holy foot dust of our guardians in a kavacha. But if we simply sleep with that kavacha, eat with that kavacha, and bathe with that kavacha, and swim, and do all types of things, but we don't serve with that kavacha on our neck, then it is simply hanging there as an ornament. And it, it will, 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 will not really have much effect. But if we serve with such kavachas, serve with such foot dust, actual dust, then that, is, that combination is very powerful. It is said, who has not got the foot dust of the devotees of the followers of Mahabharata, he can never perfect this human form of life. But there are many devotees, you'll find, actually they didn't get the dust, dust. They didn't get the dust. The, the shoe, the foot was on the shoe, the shoe was moving, they didn't get any of that. Huh? We were very lucky, we had the whole shoe. We got all the dust that came along with it. But this is called poetic speech, figurative speech. It is good, that dust. And you see the common people, but they jump. Janmashtami, I must have had a hundred people touching my feet. Who they are, I don't even know. Most of them I put in hitting them back on the head. You know what that means? They touch, throw their <coughs> sins. I touch on the head, goes back. <laughs> <laughs> Prabhupada taught us that. <coughs> you don't know who these people are, they touch the feet, touch them on the head. You don't know. They just want to throw their sins on you. Thank you. Give them back. But if you're a disciple and you touch the Guru's feet and he touches your head, that's a blessing. Mm -hmm. He's not saying, go back to your foot. <laughs> <laughs> it's in his consciousness. So, but what do they want to do? They just want to come. Because they heard who touches feet gets free from sin. They didn't hear who touches feet they get praying. They didn't hear. They heard who touches feet they get free from sin. They're ready to jump. Go down the dirt. Why do they know? I'm a sinful man. They want to touch. And they want to get, throw all the sins somewhere. But uh, that is not what it means. Just we'll take the dust. How to take the dust is through service. By becoming the obedient and surrendered servant to the order of our Guru. There lies this dust, lots of this dust, oceans of this dust, and we may bathe in that dust. Then that will be the perfection of our life. When serving Krishna, if we want some, something in return, that is not service. That is not service. That is business. Many people say, 
when you meet them, I'm doing government service, I'm doing serv railway service, I'm doing some computer software service. This is not service. It has nothing to do with service. This is just a job. This is called karma. Karma. Not seva. Seva has no karma attached to it. Karma has no result. We should not try to serve Krishna with a calculation what I will get from that. And if we are smart and we serve Krishna and we go away at some point from that service, if you are more intelligent, you won't want to take anything away. There was a man, just consider, his name was uh, Krishna Shiv Pandit. He lived in Delhi. <coughs> he was a trustee on a temple called Kalyan Chipiwada Temple, Radha Govinda Kalyan Chipiwada Temple. One day, he was walking down the street at 7 in the morning, and he met Prabhupada. Prabhupada was sleeping in a doorway. He didn't have a room. He had a blanket, and he was sleeping in a door. And he'd just gotten up from sleeping, and of course, when you know you sleep like that, you don't have a proper place for bath. So he had some water, and he was washing his face. So this Krishna Shiv Pandit, he could just see that this Swami is not a street Swami. In North India, there are so many sadhus. They are not sadhus. They wear this color. They show up to beg rice and different things from houses and temples. And they smoke vidi, they smoke hookah. They, they don't have any knowledge. They don't have no tapasya, nothing. They're not, but they look like a sadhu. So generally, many of them will sleep on the door, on the street, here and there. So, but you could just see by his face, this, this, this is man, and this man is not a street sadhu. He has a face, very sophisticated man. So, and, uh, so then they, he stopped and he spoke something. So, speaking with Prabhupada within 30 seconds, he could tell. This very sophisticated man here. Oh, Swamiji, why you're on the gate? Why you're sleeping on the, 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 the door? He came and he told, I came here to Delhi to do my publishing work from Vrindavan. I have no place. Therefore, I'm on the door. So this man arranged a room for Prabhupada to live, which then he used for several years. It was two rooms. And uh, he arranged many things for Prabhupada at that time. And lastly, he gave 5,000 rupees to Prabhupada to help him go to the USA later on. Of course, many people gave something, 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 and arranged the publishing the books. And later, Prabhupada came back. He, he wasn't on the door. He's being carried in the palki. Huh? Sometimes we would carry him in a, in a palki when going a few places. And he came in a nice shining red ambassador. And he had many disciples. And this man, at the time, and he came to Prabhupada, and he said, Swami, uh, this, uh, I gave you everything to get you started. I helped you, got you from the street, put you in one room. I gave money and all. Now my son has got uh, some disease, he needs operation. He needs operation. Please give me 5,000 rupees. Now what do you think Prabhupada did? What do you think he did? He gave, no. He said, if I give you back that money, you lose your service to Krishna. He wouldn't give him the money. And Prabhupada had millions of rupees. The condition was, give me back my money. Prabhupada said, I can't give you back this service. You already gave it to Krishna. That's the first thing. And if I do it anyway, then you lost everything. You've got nothing. <coughs> so, but nowadays, we'll come and serve Krishna, and then we want to leave, and then we'll think the ashram owes me something. Krishna owes me something. You're a thief. Everything in this universe belongs to Krishna. Anything that's not being used for Krishna now is stolen property. Do you understand? You have a job, you make money, and you don't spend for Krishna, you're going to hell for that job. I don't care what your job is. Your job may be saving the lives of little children. And you're being paid for that, and you keep that money, you'll go to hell for that. You won't go to heaven. All the money belongs to Krishna. All the land belongs to Krishna. All the buildings belong to Krishna. All the people belong to Krishna. God owns everything. He created everything. Everything is His energy. So He allows us to serve Him. He sends the energy to serve Him. Money, facility, everything. And after some time, we think, okay, Krishna owes me. 
all right, Krishna may pay you, but then you lost everything, what you did. Many arrangements can be made, but how we enter those arrangements, that is everything. There was a man, Professor Sanyal, very good example. He had a uh, professor's position in Kathak University. <coughs> He's a disciple of Srila Bhakti Siddhanta. He used to get his monthly paycheck, or cash that. Take that money and donate everything to his guru, the full amount. No, honestly, he doesn't know what his guru is going to do. Thank you. Use for printing. Who knows? You know, have one festival. Give to treasury. Nobody knows. He doesn't go with the calculation. Huh? Simply, he would go and give everything to his guru. He had a family, house, children, everything. Then, it's what Srila Bhakti Siddhanta would do. Hari Bhopra, What Srila Bhakti Siddhanta would do, he would count that money, he'd take 50% of that, and he'd give it back to Sanyal and say, this is for your mutt. Mutt. He called his house a mutt. Now we call it your ashram, Grihasta ashram. But even better than an ashram is a mutt. It means a completely spiritual institution, a place of spiritual practices and spiritual activities. He told, this is for your mutt. Then Sanyal would take that 50% of his money, and he would live with his family. Now, he could have said, he could have said, well, Guru Maharaj is only going to take 50%, so here's 50%. But then 50% he didn't give, right? He was a very smart disciple. He knew Guru Maharaj will not let me go down, so he just gave everything. Now he got, <laughs> he got all the credits, he got everything. And, but it wasn't a game. If Bhakti Siddhanta didn't give him one paisa, he would turn around and leave. He would, no, you know, I gave this, I need this, I want this. He wouldn't do that. When we do this, what is the meaning? Of course, it happens, and it happens, and it's forgotten, and whatever. We say the hell and all this stuff, but actually what it shows, it just shows the mundane mentality of the disciple. We may hear something about this in this article. It just shows, when we argue with Guru, when we demand from Guru all this, it shows lack of faith and mundane mentality. That's all it shows. We have come to Krishna, and although Krishna is the cheater of the cheats, he never cheats his devotees. He tries to cheat them, he cheats. That means cheater of the cheats. You cannot outdo Krishna. But Krishna never tries to outdo his devotees uh, and, and leave them in a down position. So sometimes, just to prove to stupid people <coughs> that devotion is like that, even when they're undeserving, uh -huh. even when they're in complete wrong mentality, completely wrong approach, the ashram or the guru will help them. You see, Krishna will help you. Why do you worry? Why do you worry? Mm -hmm. That worry and all that, that's just showing us the mundane mind, mundane mind and lack of, lack of faith. <coughs> so, Krishna consciousness, not a business. Mm -hmm. Even if Krishna consciousness business is going on, it's not a business. It is all for Krishna. A business means some individual <coughs> or individuals, they are profiting more. I know some of my brothers, they used to give Prabhupada $100,000 every month. Tripurai Maharaj used to give $100,000 every month. $100,000. This ashram not seen $100,000 yet by all its work. And profit, they used to just give profit $100,000. $100,000. $100,000. Mother Jadarani used to collect $500 a day, seven days a week for Prabhupada, every day. And with her, nearly 40, 50 other devotees. We gave thousands. We gave millions. And where it went? It went for spreading Krishna consciousness. He printed 17 volumes, Chaitanya Charitamrita, 25 volumes, Srimad Bhagavatam. He built Bombay Temple, Vrindavan Temple, uh, Mayapur Temple. These types of things, it went, it went for these purposes. That's what it's for. <coughs> but we did not think, oh, I'm giving this, I'll get that. If I left Krishna consciousness today, I'd call my brother and say, send me one shirt and pants. Because I have enough intelligence not to take anything from Krishna. Now I have so much intelligence like that. Of course, I hope that would never happen. But if it would, I'd call my brother. He's somewhere in the army. Send me one army pant and shirt. I'm, I'm going home. <laughs> You're going home? <laughs> Where's that? <laughs> You've already been there 30 years. Might, might as well stay. Even he would tell me to stay. Huh? Why bother? Stay there. Already so much good you did. Why come home? Home is nothing. <coughs> I'm just giving you a friendly example. You understand? 
if you're going to leave Krishna consciousness, don't think that Krishna owes you something. Huh? Well, you did something. You were a thief before you came. You did some service, and while going, you want to be thief again. It doesn't belong to you. And one day he'll prove it to you. Oh, this house you live in, this body, he'll say, come, give me, give me, get out. He'll broom you out from this body. You'll be flying in the sky. They say at that moment, sometimes you can look and see yourself laying there. Oh, there I am on the operating table. <laughs> Who you are? You are a spirit soul, and you belong to Krishna also. Not like, okay, I'm free. I'm one free soul. Krishna has my body, has land, money, everything. I'm one Atma. I'm free. You're not free. The Atma is part of Krishna. Part and parcel of Krishna. It came from Krishna. In that way you are all little Krishnas we call. Little Krishnas. Huh? You have some of the quality of Krishna, but you are not the full Krishna. That's called Jiva. Jivatma. <coughs> Krishna is Paramatma. Supreme Atma. You are Jivatma. Small thing we are. And that small thing we are, that also not belong to you, that belongs to Krishna. So some people say, well, the, in the real world, the real world, this is just, this is tough. This is not the real world. Bangalore is not the real world. New York is not the real world. The university is not the real world, and that is not the real knowledge. The real world is called Vaikuntha. The real world, everyone is a servant of Krishna. This is reality. Nothing belongs to you. Everything belongs to Krishna. You are his property. You are his servant. And more than that, you are his slave also. There's one nice book written by Ramanuja devotees. It was called Slaves of God. Huh? It's all about the saints, the Alwars. Huh? They have taken service beyond service, slavery. We are the divine slaves of the divine Lord. Hmm? What does it mean when I say you are slave? That means last chance gone. Everything gone. I am nothing. I am the property. If he says swim, I swim. If he says down, I'm down. If he says died, I died. He may dress me in ornaments or have me sacrificed in the fire. I'm a slave. Hmm? Well, in this world, that's horrible. That's absolutely horrible to be the slave of any king or person or anything like that. It's, it's horrible. Yet everybody in this world is slave to Maya. Maya will tell you, you have to pass your simply you jump up and go. You're a slave to the call of nature. Even the biggest kings, the biggest all these things, they're slaves to, the, to, to, to material nature. Do you understand? That's a simple example, huh? No one can deny the call of nature. Nature means maya. Slave to maya. She makes you angry. She makes you laugh. You don't say, at 12 o'clock, I'm going to have laughing. Similarly, similarly, he's laughing. You didn't know he's going to laugh. Something makes us laugh, huh? Well, two worlds are there, maha maya and yoga maya. Devotee's life is in yoga maya. Daiva prakriti. Mahaprakriti out there, Maya, illusion, and it has made everyone slave. You see this, this, this picture? Did you all the devotees see this? No. Okay, they made this book, the Aspuja book. Your offerings are here. There's one picture here. I'm sitting on this rug. That's this rug. This is 18, 18, 19. 1986, and we're 12:30. How high are we are? 33. We're 33 12. stories up. This was a penthouse. We're in penthouse preaching center in, in uh, Honolulu. People used to wonder how you can live in such a place. That was huge rent. We live 13 stories up. That is. The whole building is fully air conditioned. Outside this window is the Pacific Ocean, beautiful mountains, so many million dollar boats are lying out there. Only million dollar people, they live in this house. We lived in this house, there was no bed. Nobody had a bed. We had a few pieces of furniture, so when guests come they could sit down, no devotee had a bed. And we were preaching in this place, university, all big, big people of that city for two years exhibitions we had there, cultural exhibitions, and many things. We sponsored music, people would come, listen to music, but always there was preaching and everything. Whatever we were doing, then giving Bhagavad Gita, preaching, all, all these things, and going there. And if we go on the beach, 
and just live in a small place, put some little mud hut, who will come there? No one. No one will come there. Prabhupada built a big, big building in ben uh, uh, Mayapur. Then they asked, Swamiji, why you build a big building? Why you made a big place? Prabhupada told, because in that house I lived for one year. He had one small house. And during that time you never came. Now I built one big building, thousands of people they came. So if it's necessary to bring people to hear about Krishna, if it's necessary to build a big building or a hundred big buildings or bigger buildings than that, then we'll do that. But we do not build these things or do these things for our enjoyment. We don't even eat chickpeas for our enjoyment. We've been Sanatana are eating chana. Chana. Understand? And eating chana without the spirit of enjoyment. Understand? We're sometimes taking nimbu pani, coconut. Huh? Not by, oh, nice, I got coconut. I am enjoy coconut. Without the spirit of enjoyment. We take water, <coughs> coconut, food, whatever we have to take to maintain this body to serve Krishna. And of course, ashram is prasadam. If Swami comes to your house, he's not coming there to enjoy your wife's cooking. Huh? He's coming there to engage you in devotional service or he has to maintain his body to serve his guru, so he has to go somewhere and he has to eat. If he allows himself to become sick, then the service of his guru gone down. A real sannyasi knows my body belongs to my guru. My mind belongs to my guru. I cannot let my health go down in the name of tapasya. I have to maintain my health. I have to eat. I have to live in a clean place. Sometimes people wonder, why you got such expensive hotel room? And the answer is because cheap hotel rooms are filled with disease. And filthy people go to such places. So devotees should get better hotel room when they have to travel. It is clean, free from disease type, and decent type of people come there. He doesn't say, oh, we have more money, we'll go to three star, four star, and we'll enjoy. He does it without the spirit of enjoyment. But until you learn how to serve Krishna, even drinking a coconut is enjoyment. Or drinking a limka, you know, oh, this is enjoyment, I'm enjoying limka. The spirit of enjoyment. Who is free from the spirit of enjoyment? He may eat one kilo of sandesh, gulabs and sweet rice, but he has no enjoying spirit. Another man, he may be eating dry chana, and he's trying to enjoy the chana. Understand? But he looks, oh, he's a very austere man, he only eats chana. No, he's still trying to enjoy. One time Prabhupada told he had to fast. No. Boiled sabji, that's what it was. They gave boiled sabji for five days. He called the cooks, he told, tell the starvation committee to go to hell. He said, bring me sabji, puris, kachuris, and, and, and paneer, deep fried. Huh? He said, tell the starvation committee to go to hell. <laughs> boiled sabji. We're, we're not fit for this type of food. Huh? But still he doesn't have the spirit of enjoyment. This is Krishna Prashad. Krishna is not eating boiled sabji. I want Prashad, Krishna Prashad. Understand? Once there was a story, Srila Sridhar Maharaj was living next to Prabhupada. Next house. And inside one door was connecting. Understand? <coughs> one morning, brahmacharis came and called Prabhupada. Prabhupada, or they, they didn't call Prabhupada. Then they said, uh, Abhai Babu, come. Sridhar Maharaj is calling come for prasadam. Prabhupada said, what prasadam do you have? So then he told Muri, 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 yes, puffed rice. Yes. In Bengal, all mutts, all Godi mutts, everybody eats Muri. Almost everybody. <coughs> that is standard. Huh? All mutts eat Muri. And so that Prabhupada started to told Muri, they will have, Guru will have Muri. Then Prabhupada said, Muri? That is cheating the stomach. Huh? Tell Sridhar Maharaj come here for, for, for uh, what do you tell me? Puri Sabji. That is, that is real prashad, mm -hmm. not this muri. <laughs> but when he came to USA, we had this one type of muri in the stores. You can buy it. Really nice. And we used to hear, Prabhupada liked this very much. So we always used to buy some and have on certain days. And then we'd tell, oh, Prabhupada likes, we'd tell new people, Prabhupada likes this, likes this. Only after I came to Bengal, and particularly I came to Sridhar Maharaj's mutt, when every morning there's Muri, 
And then I remember, oh, Prabhupada liked this Murti. Must be because he's remembering when he's living in mutts and things in the old days in Bengal, everyone eats Murti. And that day, he said, this is cheating the stomach. So what do you think? Oh, he's enjoying household life. No. The devotees are free from the spirit of enjoyment. But they like to make nice things and offer to Krishna. So two moods, two moods were there. Simple prasad for the devotees, other mood, nice thing cooked, offered to Krishna, and that also taken by devotees. In either case, free from enjoyment. No spirit to enjoy. <coughs> this is an essential thing that we have to uh, look, up, look at in order to make progress in Krishna consciousness. Not enjoying spirit. How to do that? Give more to service. More to service. Honor prasadam. Don't eat it. You honor prasadam. You say prayers, you touch it to your head, you fold your hands, you honor prasadam. You don't just think, oh, food, and eat. Not like that. Then you miss the prasadam. You honor prasadam. There's this thing, don't keep prasadam waiting. If someone says prasadam, yes, 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 yes. And you keep talking in the garden. That's prasad aparad. You don't keep prasadam waiting. You may fold your hand and say, yes, yes, I'm coming, I have to finish one thing. But you don't just for the sake of gossiping or talking, Prashadam is waiting for you. That is the type of offense. We don't keep prashadam waiting. If you are offered prashadam, you take prashadam. Somebody offers prashadam, you don't go, no, no. Maybe you already ate. All right, Prabhu, I just finished prashadam. Then what the, okay, I take one small piece. What does it mean? Here, take Bhagavan's mercy. No, thank you. How you can say no, thank you? They have come, take God's mercy. God has sent his mercy to you. And you say, no. Even if you just had a huge feast, you say, yes. And take small one piece more, tosi leaf or one rice or something more. Never say no to prashada. Understand? Because prashada means the mercy of Krishna. Prashad. We want that prashad. We can't live without that prashad. We'll get that prashad. At any moment, we will take that prashad. There was one, and, and, and the difference is the difference between pure devotee and not pure devotee. When, what is his name? Prat, I don't know. Sarvabhoma Bhattacharya. He's a big scholar. So many things happen, happen, happen. One morning, 4.30 in the morning, Mahaprabhu came to his door. Tuck, tuck, tuck his door. He had some packet of Jagannath Prashad. Huh? That man got up from bed, didn't wash his mouth, didn't wash his face, no cleaning the teeth, didn't wash his hands, nothing, feet. Came to the door, Mahaprabhu said, Prashad, Jagannath Mahaprasadam. Now what happens? If you go in town, you go Prashad. Everybody, no, no, everybody go like this. No, no, I, I'll take after that. You get excuses this long. Man take, yes, Swami, thank you. He puts it here. Mm -hmm. Why? Because they're not pure devotees of Krishna. Most of them aren't devotees at all. That Sarvabhama Bhattacharya, he reached in, he took the prasad, he ate the prasad. Mahaprabhu was so happy, he told him, you're a pure devotee of Krishna. This is pure devotion to Krishna. And he became very great devotee of Mahaprabhu. Still we're talking about him today, Sarvabhama Bhattacharya. But that was the mark, how he treated the prasad. Not how much writing he can do and big speech he can give. Little thing, how he honored prasad. He didn't put any other rule before, washing, any time, anything. Prasad is here, I must take, Jagannath's mercy. Yes, that is pure devotion. Do you follow? Mm -hmm. Great offering composed mainly of great souls. Well, I don't have my words of my own. I think that's, that's, the that's how we that's how we judge a, a, also that's a measure of judgment. <clears throat> that uh, why you should have some different idea than the great souls? First, we feel that those great souls have expressed perfectly whatever I would want to say in my most perfect moment. They've expressed it, so we, we, we will give expression to what they have said. And in some, some, some moment, we may compose something or say something of our own tone. But even that should be the same thing, just in a different word structure. Like, like Sri Gopal, there was nothing new added there. It was, what is in our line, in, in our own words. So either in our own words or repeating exactly those, those words, but that, that message should come, that same unadulterated sound should come. When Srila Poimaraj wrote hundreds of articles, he wrote most of them 
in exactly the same way you just wrote this Vyasa Puja. 90% is telling what the great Charyas in the scriptures have said. And he adds a humble comment here and there. And he wrote volumes, volumes of, of articles. Many, many, and can fill many, many books. Hundreds of articles he wrote like that. Wrote like that. So that's very much appreciated. Yeah, uh, the devotees, and again, giving some categories. One who preaches but doesn't practice. No, first, one who practices but doesn't tell anything, doesn't preach. He, he's doing, but he's not telling. Then, one who's telling, but he's not doing. And then one who's telling and doing. He's preaching and doing. So two are, one is best, who's preaching and who's helping others and doing himself, that's best. Okay, at least save yourself. You, you can't help others, you can't tell others. Okay, you do yourself, that's good. But it's unacceptable to be a preacher and not follow, to be a hypocrite. Why? Because this will give the bad impression to people. Oh, the Vaishnavas, they're like that. They tell about a very high thing, but they do a very ordinary way. They're just like us, us people in the world. They tell, you don't be after money, but they are after money. You sacrifice everything to Krishna, but they are keeping themselves. You know? That will give a bad impression. So of these three, the middle one is not appreciated. He preaches but does not follow. This is this is not So in Guru Acharya, we hope to see both things. Both some right preaching and some right behavior also. Achar and prachar. Prachar means preaching. Achar means your habits. His achar should match his prachar. Uh, the acharya's life should be an open book, not a closed sequence of rooms, <coughs> secrecy. should be an open book. What he does, everybody can see, everybody knows. An open book, not, not a secret life. Sannyasi also, not a secret life. So many people have a secret life. Where they go, what they do, we don't know. Sometimes their own family doesn't know. The man says, I'm going, I'll be back. <coughs> and he goes with friends. He has a secret life, gambling, whatever. His family doesn't even know. And that's, that's standard. <coughs> and in an ashram, for ashram devotees, particularly the sannyasis, and especially the guru, no private life is allowed. Life is an open book. No, no, pri no means no private life, no secret life. It should be the standard of the preaching not something different. Not that he will tell, devotees should eat simple prasad. Then his menu will all be fried items and in ghee and three types <coughs> sweets and nice things, but for the devotees he gives habisha or kitchu, and then enjoying nice food on the side. He's telling, come on, everything belongs to Krishna Baba. Give the money, give the money. Then this man gives the money, and then Guruji puts it in his pocket and sends to his family. And that's cheating. That is not to the standard. If he's telling, come on, give the money, and that man gives the money, he's also giving. He goes to Krishna. Actually, here, when you give me money, I just give it to the treasurer. It goes, I don't know, it just goes there, it goes in the bank. It gets spent for the long list of Krishna's bills. <laughs> we have. There, we say, in this world, you can't escape, even when you're, uh, you can't escape money. You have to have money in this world. And it's even such that when you died, for the next day also you're spending money. Even you died, but some money has to come for a funeral, right? So that money will come from your pocket even after you've died. Right? So we use this same kind of logic. We go in debt for Krishna. Right? That I spent all the money I have now, and I also borrowed some money, and I also spent that for Krishna. So the future is also already spent for Krishna. You follow? Sri yeah. Bhakti Siddhanta, he was very happy when the devotees did that. Hmm? <coughs> Prabhupada once told us, our Guru Maharaj used to collect money. And then he would spend all the money, and he would create a debt. <coughs> and then he would send us out to collect more money. And this way he kept us very busy in Krishna's service. 
and kept our future engagement sure. Understand? Now, in this world, everybody's in debt. You have a debt, you have a debt. Everybody borrows money and goes in debt. You go in debt to go to school. And your, and your future is sure in the material world. You must work for this company. You must pay this to government. It's sure. Debt means it's, it's connected there. But the same principle we take to Krishna. We go in debt for Krishna. The future energy already spent. I could give $100 to Krishna, but I borrowed 50 from you, and I gave 150 I created debt also. To that depth, we must go to serve Krishna. All that we have, and some beyond. And we want to see it, not just hear it. Understand? If somebody's telling it, well, where's, the, where's the proof? By example. So Acharya means one who teaches by example. He has something to say and lives his life behind that. Also. Of course, there are different degrees. The householder has one level. Brahmachari, no money. When Brahmachari recently came here, I said, how you came here? Student, Brahmachari? Yeah, give me the money. I asked this Brahmachari, do you have some money? The bank balance <coughs> stock? No, no. So then everything comes to one. Otherwise, there's, you can't be a Brahmachari and have money. That's not Brahmachari. Brahmachari means you came, offered everything to the Guru, you are ready for service, ready for education. That's Brahmachari. Nowadays, there'll be Brahmacharis that have their own bank account, even Swiss bank accounts. <laughs> Making some collection for a big institution and taking, you know, 28% for their self. This, you can pay a collection agency, they will collect for your ashram and they will charge you some percentage. That is a business. But you, if you are a brahmachari, you cannot do that. And simply send to your village or send here or send there. That is, that is cheating. Who is it cheating? Cheating the people. person gives a thousand rupees. He gives a thousand rupees to Krishna. A thousand rupees should go to Krishna. He's not giving a thousand rupees to Krishna and then we're giving you 28%. And you send to your uncle. And you're a brahmachari. That's cheating business. So, these things are not allowed. Still, some people persist to do the wrong thing. But in time, Krishna is the super policeman. He catches up with everybody. Time I am. Time comes. Krishna catches up. We cannot outsmart Krishna. We cannot, out, we cannot cheat Krishna. Ultimately, a cheater cheats who? Himself. He only cheats himself. And everybody in the material world is a cheater. So much cheating is going on. Lying and cheating. But in the in the ashram, these should, these things these things should be absent. They should become clear. People should be transparent. Naturally, the beginning student or somebody may have a problem, but particularly I mean the acharya must be transparent. You cannot tolerate these types of things in an acharya, in the guru. Cheating. By what he speaks is what he lives to that standard. That's the standard. To have, uh, to represent Vyas, you have to be free from fault, free from vice. You know what vice means? <coughs> Bad habits. Free from vice. <coughs> then? Offering to Guru Gurudev, I'm chanting very nicely, I'm doing everything perfectly, I got first class sadhana, I, I, big, big. We want to try and do that, even if we have first class sadhana, even if we have first class seva, we do everything, when we come in front of our Guru, we should take the mentality, actually I am nothing, if I got any success, it is only by your mercy. I am only the ocean of bad qualities, not even one good quality we found in me. Always we should present ourselves in front of our guru in that way. We should not try to make our case in front of our guru. Even if we are chastised for something we did not do, means some fault. We are found some, our guru finds a fault with us, he gives us a lesson. We should not try to give our case. This is not the court. This is not the Tashadar's office. Huh? The Panchaya, uh, where we try to make our case and vindicate ourselves. Even if we're falsely accused by our guru, the real standard of devotion is we accept that. Why? Because that fault is in you somewhere. 
You may not even know that it exists, but it is in there. It may be duplicity, it may be greediness, whatever it may be, it is there. And falsely accused, like I told you in the story, these boys, when I was a boy, growing up, all boys in the world, we do mischief, huh? right? All boys do mischief. So every once in a while, my father would just come by, he'd just give a slap here in the back. i say, what? What did I did? He'd say, I don't know, but you must have done something. <laughs> all you boys are very smart. I can't see what you do. You do something, so here, put a slap. Huh? So who was it? No, no, I've done nothing. I'm the innocent man. I'm the pure man. I've done nothing. No. Maybe what the guru chastises you for, you did it in a previous life. <clears throat> but you got accused of it in this life, and you didn't do it. The point, though, don't crack your head and try to figure that. I think so many things in the previous life I seem to always be chastised. But yeah, why? You should think like that. Main thing is, don't make your case. Don't present your, oh, I am this, I am faultless, I did this, I, I, I. When we do that, we actually go down in the eye of Krishna. Even the Guru may chase down the ladder, try to catch you, oh, yes, I understand, Prabhu, okay, okay. He may come down like this and, 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 and treat you like a child. But in devotion, you've actually slided down. You should not try to establish your case. Mahabhu told I am fool in front of my guru. Murka. Murka. I'm not a pundit. One time this devotee told me, I'm very learned, I'm a physician, I am qualified. Oh God. What happened? You never come in front of our guru. What is your qualification? If, if Prabhupada asked, what is your qualification? His disciples will say, no qualification. Even they are PhDs, <coughs> no qualification. Then he may say, no, no, I mean up to what standard you study. Then they will come out, all right, I got PhD in physics. Or something. But in India, everybody, what's your qualification? Chess comes up. Oh, this is Mr. So-and-so, Mrs. So-and-so. They have MA, the PhD, just this, all this ahamkar, ahamkar, ahamkar. It's just like, that is not Vaishnava. I don't have any qualification, but if I have one qualification, I am the obedient servant of the order of my guru. I am the foot dust servant of my guru. Oh, highly qualified man, highly qualified woman, highly qualified. And all these other qualities will simply go to the funeral pyre with you. All the certificates will be put under the wood and burned. They mean nothing. So if you have that qualification, that will take you high, high, high and above. The highest qualification. When I told the Prabhupada's Gyasa Puja how great he was, I showed how Ramanuja, who's Ananta, Shakti, three states, and Madhvacharya, who's Bhima and Vayu, it's a Bhima can eat, I mean, uh, uh, Madhvacharya could drink 100 liters of milk and eat 1,000 bananas. That means Bhima, that's Bhima, big appetite. One state, one state. And now by the whole world, what must be the greatness of this person? What, and if asked him who you are and who you are, and his answer, I am the humble servant of my guru. That is my only credit. If I, if he, he said, if I have any credit, that is it. Or we'll think, oh, that is his humility. Yes, that is his humility. And that must be there. Humility must be there. Otherwise, we are nowhere in front of Krishna. What do we have? What qualification do we have? We don't have any qualification. You know something? God can make you dumb in a second. You can't even talk. Only, only air will come from your mouth. It sometimes happened. A man, there was one man, actually was famous in India, Dr. Radhakrishna. He blasphemed Krishna in his Bhagavad Gita. And then Prabhupada went to see him. He was in Germany in the last days of his life. And he could not speak. He was a great speaker always in India. At the end of his life, sound could not come from him. Prabhupada went to see him and afterwards he said, yes, just see. He has ridiculed Krishna in Bhagavad Gita, when he wrote Bhagavad Gita, he minimized Krishna. Such a speaking he did, and in the end, what is his power speaking? Krishna just took it away. So, the point is, we are nothing without Krishna. There are so many big, big swamis, they are actually offenders of the Supreme Lord. False Bhagavad, criticizing so many people. 
But in the end, simply they all perish. They go to the grave, they go to the funeral fire, and their name goes in a log book somewhere, closed. And still, we are talking about Krishna, Krishna, Krishna. Before they came, we talked about Krishna. When they were dead and gone, we talked about Krishna. No matter what they said, it did not affect. Uh, but it will affect them. If they are blasphemies of uh, blasphemy, blasphemy this word, if they speak ill of the Supreme Lord, they may lose their power <coughs> of, of speech, speech in the future life. They, they won't get to speak. All these things. Once Prabhupada told us, by your tongue, you can go high or you can go low. And then he explained, if you say good things, glorify Krishna, glorify Krishna's devotee, you will go up. And if you speak bad of Bhagavan, if you speak bad of Krishna's devotees, you will go down. We can go up or down just from this tongue. Such a strong sense speaking. Sometimes we find people who have no hope to control their speaking. They can't control their tongue. They eat anything and speak anything. The devotee means control of the senses. Control the tongue. Speak Krishna. Eat Krishna Prashad. Speak Krishna devotees. Good things. When a bad thing happens to us, we take it that it falls on our head as a hidden type of a blessing. Why this bad thing came on my head? What, what did I do to draw this thing to me? We don't find, oh, he did it. Oh, she did it. Oh, that person did it. Oh, now we're opening a court to see who did it. Who did it? You did it. Your karma it came to you. Karma. We should not blame others. Point that the culprit is outside. It's like sometimes a child, he hurts his leg. Huh? He bumps the stone. And he's crying. Father says, what happened? What happened? I hurt my leg on the stones. So the father takes a stick and he beats that stone two or three times. Tip, tip, tip. And the child is laughing. Okay, stone got punishment. We're not like that. that. I got suffering, now I want punishment. There must be punishment. Course, there are extremes, but ideally, in devotee dealings with ourselves, we don't think like that. I got some suffering. I want to give punishment to somebody else. <coughs> this is not. If you give punishment, then you're involving in that karma. It is said, even in the Koran, you know the Koran, I don't know much of it. It's not a very high book, but it says one beautiful thing. It says that one should be like the sandalwood tree that gives shade to the man who comes to cut it and the blade that hits the tree, ah, it's good smell, sandal. It says nothing, it gives shade on the man who's cutting it and gives aroma to this thing. No harm can come to us actually if we have that mentality, actually. Maybe some harm, but we'll be free. But when we try to punish others, what happens if you study it? When you try to punish others for their wrong, you get involved in that to such an extent you are suffering right along with that person more. No, it has happened by Christmas and maybe what it is, I don't know. I have, it is my bad, bad luck, my bad karma. We are free. Immediately you are, there is some freedom there. You are not suffering more. Then who's done wrong? No, it will come to them. Sure. No one is, no one is excluded. <coughs> But if you want to be the one to deliver the punishment, uh, unfortunately you will have to suffer with, along with that. When you point the finger, that is the man. These three point back and give you misery yourself. It's a, it's a cosmic law. If you find fault with others, misery will come to you in a different way. The only fault you should look for is the one in yourself. That is a way to progress in spiritual life. Oh, bye. Another what thing. Yeah. Another half an hour. Yeah. Uh, there is a saying, I don't know what to say. We seek mercy, not justice. In the world, if you go to the court of the Tushildar's office, the district magistrate's office. You'll go in and you seek justice. No, I want justice. Justice. Mm -hmm. But in Vaishnavism, our appeal is for mercy. Mm -hmm. We don't appeal for justice. We appeal for mercy. Mm -hmm. If we have real faith <coughs> in Guru, that he is Krishna's representative, we have real faith in Guru, that he is the representative of his guardian, 
there behind him. If we have this faith, and indeed he is, then we can approach anything and everything. And we are after this mercy. We have no qualification. There are so many difficulties, obstacles are in front of us. They are insurmountable. But we can move forward successfully knowing that by the mercy of Guru, we will be successful. One day, one of Srila Bhakti Siddhanta's disciples, I happened to be present in the Srimapalli, that was Shantamaraj. Uh, Bhakti Kushan Shantamaraj. Kushan? Kumut. Kumut Shantamaraj. Someone asked him, what is the quality of Guru? <coughs> What is the quality of Guru? So he told a few things. What is Guru, according to Shastra and everything? Then he told, actually, all this is secondary. We're not interested. Huh? Even he told, he has so much knowledge, Sri Krishna, this is not important for us. You're a stupid fellow. Gurudev has so much knowledge of Krishna. So what? You're so stupid you can't understand any of it. So what? What is interest for you? He is big tapasti. We're eating five times a day, prashad. You can't live without prashad. Huh? What does it matter? Guru is big tapasya. Guru is complete control of his senses. What, what does that help to you? And in this way he showed that all these, so many qualities of guru, what interest to you? Then he told, Kripa Sindhu. He said, this is the quality which we want to see. Our guru has mercy or not? Is he kind? Does he, has, does he have kripa, mercy? Do you understand? If he has mercy, I'm safe. If he doesn't have mercy, he may have all these other things. How are they going to help me? I'm a fool. I eat too much. I'm lazy. All, I'm all bad qualities. But if my guru is merciful, I'm safe. Kripasana. The most important quality of Guru Dave is Kripasana. He must be merciful. Not that we'll see, okay, somebody does wrong, immediately he gives a beating. Where's the mercy? Children will make mistakes. The devotees make mistakes. People make mistakes. And then the Guru will be merciful. That's one level of mercy, forgiving people's mistakes. There's a thing. Once, you are forgiven. Twice, you are forgiven. Three times, you're out. <coughs> then mercy comes different way. You're out. Once, you keep repeating the same mistake, then the Guru is not a fool. He'll not just give that type of mercy. Then mercy will be, you go out. That is his mercy. But that won't be first. That's not first. Huh? First will be consideration, kindness. And not just mercy about problems. There may be no problem. Still, we are stupid fellows. We are slow to progress. We're not making a problem. But still, we're not superstars. Huh? We rely on the mercy of the Guru. The most important quality in the group is mercy. And this is where we put our attention. Please give your mercy. Please be kind to this fallen soul. That is, a, that is the way to approach. So, now there are two. First, the most general qualification of guru is evam pram pra praptam. It comes in disciplic succession. Without being in disciplic succession, you cannot be guru. That's the bottom line. But of course, just because in disciplic succession doesn't mean automatically become guru, but automatically not guru if you're not in pram pra. The first thing is evam pram pra praptam. In disciplic succession. Then the next most general thing is he must know the science of Krishna. Not that he's tall, not that he's foreign, not that he's Indian, not that he's short, fat, old, or young. <coughs> not that he has a high voice, a low voice, he sings, he sings sweetly, rich or poor. Nothing. He knows the science of Krishna. That is the next qualification. Now, after that, to know what is guru, some qualification necessary from the side of the disciple. Two things, I can, I can show or any man can show, this is my parampara. Okay, he's in parampara. Then a lot of knowledge, talking Bhagavad Gita, knows a few hundred, maybe a thousand slokas, tells so many things, like, yeah, he knows what is the science of Krishna. Then, that much, 
any person can see that is external. And doesn't matter if you stay there for years, you'll never see past that unless you approach with humility, full dandabats and seva. Pranipashnena sevaya. Tadvidi pranipatena pranipashnena sevaya. There must be uh, submissive inquiries. We give our full dandabats and seva. And the third one is the hardest one. It will come. Oh, Guru Maharaj, have a question. Swamiji, have a question. Everybody gives dandabats. Little children come, they tell dandabats, dandabats, little kids going like this. Huh? Yeah, that is very easy. When you have a question, tell like that. Seva. This is the rare thing that comes. And this is what opens the door. It opens the curtain where you know what is your Guru day. Not simply being initiated. Initiated? That's first step. That means, all right, registered servant, come on. <laughs> That's all it means. Some people think, oh, I got now, beads. And they go. They don't come back again. They just sit far and shine the beads. And put some coconut oil and make it very shiny and get shiny, right? And put nice, nice, nice tea lock. And simply come and show a face. But no service. So, okay, that's all they can do for now. But such person cannot remove the curtain to find out what is this Guru Day. What is Guru Day? <coughs> and Krishna is revealing through Guru Day to the disciple, according to his surrender, according to his service, the degree of faith. It is like a very magical, mystical thing that is going on. And ultimately, we will come, excuse me, we will come to know through our Guru Day the highest truth, which is what? which is who we are in the eternal world, and what is our eternal service to the Supreme Lord. That is revealed through the mercy of Guru in the line of service and chanting with the Holy Name. This will come to us. Bhakti Lord Thakur says, when I chant the Holy Name, and it's understood, received from his Guru Day, in service of his Guru Day, that my role, he says, what I am, who I am, my place in the eternal Leela Krishna, it just descends like the morning rays of the sun and is so clear to me. Now that's the highest plane of revelation and truth. What we'll do in eternity, you see. Very important, but down here in this world, we'll get revelation how I can serve Guru, what I should do. We'll get enthusiasm to come forward. Oh, in this way I want to come and serve Guru. Service will reveal service. Surrender will reveal surrender. First magnanimity comes to you, first from the Guru. He gives the seed of devotion, he gives opportunity. Next step must come from the disciple. Service gives born to service. And that gives born to more service. And surrender and these things. And as this goes on, then what does our Guru actually, that becomes more revealed to us. Otherwise, without this, is this the thing? Why disciples to put some big decoration for Guru? Uh, when he goes somewhere, they want him to wear good cloth. They don't want him to wear uh, one cloth with broken button. He should go in a decent car, all these things. Why? So the people will understand, oh, okay, some important Swami has come here. Huh? If he just goes, looks like I went to a shop the other day, right? Remember I went, I bought those dumb shit. Right? So I just entered, and the man goes, uh, it's gone. And I said, no. Nope. Uh, Guru is Gosai Ghat. I said, yep, that's us. <laughs> so he goes, Guruji is there. I said, I said, yeah, one Guruji is there. Right? I thought one Guruji is there. I bought some cloth. He didn't give any discount. Right? Okay. I left the cloth. I left the shop. Not even sure knows that man. He buys many times from him and he gives discount because he knows he's an important man. I went in and just played. No, no, no. I, is there. I want to buy a gumption. Okay, no, I just take all my money. And he saw this receipt because it doesn't give any discount. Huh? So then I told him, Nanda Kishore is going to go back in town. Do you know? The man. <laughs> the man from the ashram. Guruji himself was here just to check what type of man you are. And you gave no, no discount. Immediately he'll say, No, no, I didn't know. I'm sorry. Immediately he'll discount something. Because if he doesn't know, I'm just giving an example. Like, if he doesn't know, he'll walk right over your head, right? 
So disciples always want to show, no, no, this is our guru, get out of his way, he stands here, he sits here like this. Otherwise, how are they going to recognize? It's just another Swami roaming the street. They have no eyes to see the guru, only who serves. Then he can recognize what is Krishna in the guru. What is Krishna in the words of the guru? And this is going on deeper than any ocean and higher than any mountain. And this is giving more enthusiasm than anything we can find, any Amrit in this world, does not compare to the revelations of Guru when we enter into that plane. And this is going on, Guru and Disciple, Guru and Disciple, Param Param. But there's, there's a way to enter, and it becomes a deep ocean. So many people have come here, taken beads, and gone away, and every once in a while show up, but they don't ever do any service. And so what is the Guru is just a foreigner <coughs> who lives in a garden. That's all they know. But who comes and serves. And not just, oh, hey, I went there one week, you know, I raked the garden for a week. I don't know. I didn't see anything. That is nothing, rake the garden for a week. That means already you came with, I'm only uh, coming this much. Huh? That means you weren't even here half that much. Huh? Condition was there. You come openly to serve Krishna, the Vaishnavas, and Guru. Then things are revealed. The old system would be like this. You come, you want to take initiation? No. The guru immediately tell you no. No. I want to live in ashram? No. 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 Then if you're not sincere, you'll simply go. But if you're sincere, you will park your camp outside. After some days, who's that man living outside our gate? Oh, Guru Maharaj, that boy came, he wants to live in ashram, wants to be a disciple. You said no, 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 but he's on the gate. Then the Guru will say, okay, call him. That was the old system. No, oh, you want to join ashram? Fine. How much money you got? Join. <laughs> not like that. They say, no, no, go, go. And if you are not sincere, you go. And if you are sincere, you will stay. In Buddhism, they used to do like this. The, 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 they would knock on the door of the mud. They had a system, and it had to be like this. You come on the back door of the mud, not front door, back door, you knock on the door. Then the abbot of the mud, who was the, like the Swami of the mud, the Buddhist man, you'll come. Okay, what you want? You will pronounce your name, you'll come to your village, everything, where you came from, and you'll tell, I want to enter the, the mud and be brahmacharya here to be trained, I want to be here. And then you'll bow your head. And then that man will say, no, what is full? Boom. He'll shut the door. And you are supposed to stay there with your head on the floor. And one hour, two hours, six hours, night will pass. Next morning, or after two or three days, the man will open the door to see if you're there. And if you're there, come boy, and bring you in the mud. And if your leg got tired and tummy got empty, then you go back to your village. Understand? Then... They would bring you in the mud, and they would sit down for eating. And uh, one Swami would have his bowl of rice and everybody, and they'd put rice and tell everybody to eat. And the Swami would go like this, and then he'd stop. And all the boys that would eat, he would say, okay, now I'm finished, now go to your village. And any boy who did not eat, then he could stay. Many tests. Many tests. Why? Guruji should eat first. Guruji should eat first. Then the disciples should eat. So who did not have the right attitude, they were not allowed to stay, take blessings, live in your village. Right? Well, nowadays, we don't have all those same systems, but the same thing actually happens. There are tests. You come to the ashram, which way you come to the ashram, what is mentality for the ashram, how you'll be able to stay here, all these things, you have to have correct mentality. Then you progress, then you know what is Guru, then you'll know what is the holy name of Krishna, Harinam, then you'll know. Then you'll know actually what is deity of Krishna. You'll know what is Shaligam, what is Govardhan. By service and surrender. Otherwise, only this much is showing, and after that, no entrance, no access. So, Prabhu is telling something in that way. He came, he got some general connection. Then, he made an endeavor to come, associate, and serve. To try and please his guru, to come a great distance. Started coming. You want to give the Guru's time? Don't think you just show up on Sunday and time is there. And he is coming to serve you or you are coming to serve him. So come and stay some days, then he may 
we may get the Guru's attention. Um, we may hear something then. Huh? And if we have no service, we won't hear anything. We'll serve, and we'll serve, and we'll serve, and then Krishna will give opportunity. Without the service, we can't tell. Sometimes now the Kishore comes, oh, there's one person wants to see you. So give him a photo. <laughs> Don't come and tell me somebody wants to see me. They have questions, they want to hear about Krishna, then I'm ready. Simply stand there and be looked at and give a photo. Photo is for seeing. Right? All you want to do is see, have a photo. If you want to talk, I'm ready. If you want to ask questions about Krishna, you want to <coughs> receive some prasadam of the mercy of Krishna I can give. But this, this, I want to see. Prabhupada told, I am not an animal in the zoo. <laughs> <laughs> Means we come for seeing, only see. Not like that. We find the seeing business very painful business. We should come with some proper service. We should come with some proper inquiry. We should come with the proper respect. Then we will get prasad. Then we will get the mercy of Krishna. Then we will get the blessing of Guru. Then we'll know what is Guru, what is Krishna. If we come in this way, if we don't, the whole thing is a locked secret. There's a mystery for that forever. It cannot be. I'm open.